It's time for another update about Myanmar. This is a Southeast Asian country. It borders China, it borders Thailand. Uh, and since February of this year, the, the military had taken over. They ousted the client regime installed into power by the United States. It was headed by Aung San Suu Kyi, who throughout her whole life, she was propped up by the West. Uh, she got, you know, the Nobel Peace Prize, which we all know is a joke. She has literally been to Washington, D.C. to get uh, an award from the, from the National Endowment for Democracy, which also completely funds uh, everything going on inside Myanmar's opposition. So uh, let's take a look at this. This is the NED's website for Burma 2020. They're still calling it Burma. It used to be a colony of the British Empire called Burma. Now it's Myanmar, but the U.S. doesn't care what the people in Myanmar want to call themselves. They're going to still call it Burma. And look at all of this political interference. This uh, millions and millions of dollars dumped into Myanmar's internal political landscape to skew it in favor of Washington's interests, uh, completely indifferent to the best interests of the people actually living in Myanmar. And this is to keep people divided and keep the country under control of Western interests and, and barring that, preventing it from developing on its own as a prosperous country, independent of the West's so-called international order. Now, uh, Myanmar also plays a significant role uh, in the One Belt, One Road initiative. Uh, the Belt and Road Initiative. There's a pipeline going from Rakhine State to Yunnan Province, Kuoming, and beyond. This is an oil pipeline that allows China to move hydrocarbons to mainland China without having to go through the Strait of Malacca, through through the South China Sea. Uh, so it saves them a lot of time, and it also kind of offsets the vulnerability of those shipping lanes that the U.S. military constantly threatens. And so this is why the U.S. is so busy in Myanmar. They're busy in virtually every nation along China's periphery to encircle and contain China. So let's let's just take a look at what's going on. This We're, we're told that this is a pro-democracy movement struggling against an evil military dictatorship in Myanmar. Let's see what this uh, pro-democracy movement, what, what are they up to? So this is what they're up to. By the way, Myanmar now is funded by the U.S. government through the National Endowment for Democracy. This comes to us from the Columbia Journalism Review National Endowment for Democracy. Myanmar now receives funding from the National Endowment for Democracy. So right there, just keep that in mind. This is opposition media. And every time I do a video about Myanmar, I have people from Myanmar's opposition come into the comment section and ask me, how much is Myanmar's military paying me to say this? They're going to pay me to read the opposition's media to people? Think, think about it. So I, I just want people to realize this is the opposition media saying this. Myanmar's shadow government launches plan to tax business owners. So they're, they're talking about they're going to raise all of this money by taxing people in Myanmar. And uh, they're saying it's voluntary, kind of, but then down here, they're kind of saying, those who fail to pay would be committing tax evasion and face legal action, including the declaration of their assets as illegal after the revolution had succeeded in overthrowing the junta. And so this is a government that no one even knows where these people are, whether they're even still in Myanmar or not, but they're, they're going to try to collect taxes from people in Myanmar, even though they're not running anything, they're not building anything, they're not doing anything with that money except openly waging war against their own country. They, ha they have already declared war, civil war against their own country. Uh, and so not only are they trying to get money from people to continue destroying their own country, uh, they're going to put you on a list if you don't pay this completely illegitimate government that no one even knows where it is, where it's located. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't get face to face with these people if you wanted to. Uh, let's see what else the opposition is up to. Here we go. Uh, so again, this is November, early November. Police officer dies in Mandalay bombing near GEMS Trading Center. So uh, the, the military and police are everywhere, all over Myanmar, protecting absolutely everything because this, this national unity government and their so-called People's Defense Force are attacking absolutely everything. They're blowing up bridges. They're attacking trains. Uh, they're attacking infrastructure, telecom infrastructure. They're shooting up schools. They admit they're shooting up schools. 
Uh, so the police and military have to be everywhere to try to guard everything. So this was uh, this is a gem trading center. They were inspecting a suspicious package because this is what they do. They just put these bombs everywhere and uh, the police have to try to come in here before innocent people are blown to pieces because that's what they've been doing. Uh, so that's one story. Here's another one. School reopening greeted with criticism from parents and teachers. The reopening of schools on Monday was widely dismissed as an effort by Myanmar's junta to reassert control over students. I mean, you, you have a country and you have children and children need to go to school. And what, what, sort, of, what sort of government would try to pose as legitimate? They're going to collect taxes from people, but they're not even going to let students go to school think about that uh, how absurd and yet this is what the op opposition media openly says this is how they try to defend their movement here they say uh, a plan to introduce a new 14-week curriculum to cover lessons missed since schools were closed on july 9 was unlikely to succeed because of the growing opposition to the coup regime's rule according to a teacher taking part in the civil disobedience movement and we We've talked about in the past what happens if you don't join the civil disobedience movement. It's not necessarily that you're part working for the government. It's if you're not joining the opposition, they will hunt you down and kill you. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And they say, I can say with full certainty that this plan to reopen schools will fail. You can see that more and more high school students from all over the country have begun to take part in the revolution and not really. Not really. As a matter of fact, so few people have been taking part in the quote unquote revolution that they, they had been shooting up schools to try to scare people from going because they, they, they asked people to join the civil disobedience movement. And when they didn't, they started using terror to convince them not to go to school. So it was first it was a, an appeal to voluntarily join. And then it was the use of terrorism to involuntarily force people to, to, to join the movement or at least not go to school and again who who has the the best interests of myanmar in mind and then would be doing things like this so check out this older reuters article because this is why they had to close the schools in the first place boycott and bombings mar myanmar's new school year so yeah there, there were boycotts but then there were also bombings there were noticeably fewer students at many schools in the main city of yangon as the new academic year began on tuesday for the first time since both the february one coup and the relaxation of curbs imposed last year against the spread of COVID-19. Security forces stood guard at some schools and brought pupils under armed escort from their homes. Why did they have to do that? Teachers were also afraid, he said, adding some teachers go to school in normal clothing and change into their uniforms only inside the school. Uh, not even half of the teachers uh, that are that are part of this uh, teachers federation joined the civil disobedience movement, which is why they resorted to terrorism. And then if you come down here, it says between May 1st and May 26th, there were 115 bombings or bombing attempts and 18 arson attacks at educational establishments. Uh, so this is the opposition, you know, they, they're schizophrenic and, and out of one side of their mouth, they'll openly admit that if you go to school, well, they'll kill you. Uh, the schools aren't safe. They're going to burn them down. They're going to shoot them up. So don't go to school. And then if you do go to school, it's your own fault because they warned you. But then out of the other side of their mouth, they're going to say, well, no one's going to going to school because they're all joining our opposition movement. And you can see Reuters is Western media. They're, they're not taking the side of Myanmar's military. They're, they're downplaying, if anything, the level of terrorism that the opposition is using in Myanmar. Uh, against everyone, including teachers and including nurses and, and other people who have nothing to do with the military or police. Uh, here's another one. This was from November 3rd. Yaw resistance fighters threaten serious action against anyone who continues to work for Junta. So they're saying this defense force has set a November 5th deadline for those working under the coup regime to quit. Let's see what happens to you. Did they tell you what happens to you if you don't quit? The options are clear. They can choose the side of either the military council or the people. If they take the people's side, they will have full security. But if 
they choose the junta's side, there will be absolutely no security for them. And so what are they saying? They're saying they will hunt you down and kill you. They will murder you. And uh, just to give you an example of that, here's another article from Myanmar Now, November 3rd. Junta appointed administrator shot dead in Mandalay while urging people to pay electric bills. So uh, a, re a resistance group there claims that they killed this uh, administrator while he ordered people through a megaphone to pay their bills uh, to or see their electricity cut off uh, because that's something else that's going on. In essence, the opposition in Myanmar is destroying the entire country. They are killing absolutely everyone who doesn't join them. This is a terrorist movement. Uh, I showed you how all of their backing, all of their funding comes from the United States. The, the government that was ousted in February was not a product of democratic elections. People say there was a, an election and there was no vote rigging. Even if you believe that, that's not the only way to interfere in an election. If the U.S. was, and they have been, dumping millions and millions of dollars into the opposition to give them an advantage in, in the media or through campaigning or through building up educational institutes to churn out people that will regularly vote uh, in a way that suits the U.S. government and their proxies in Myanmar, that is also interference. That is also rigging in an election. That is not democracy. That is not self-determination. That is a political process being determined, driven in Washington for Washington. And so uh, now that they've been thrown out of power, we see the, the mask fall off. They're not pro-democracy. They're not uh, human rights crusaders of any kind. They are terrorists, uh, literally killing anyone who doesn't join them. This is what's going on in Myanmar right now. This is threatening to not just de destabilize and destroy Myanmar indefinitely, but it could have a ripple effect across all of Southeast Asia. The Western media is, is not really talking about this much now because if people do focus on what's going on in Myanmar, they're going to see the opposition talking like this, talking about if you go to school, we'll kill you. If you go to your job, your government office job, we will kill you. If you try to go out and collect money, for the electric bill. You know what happens if you don't pay your electric bill? There's no money to maintain the system that produces electricity, and then no one has electricity. So uh, this is an opposition deliberately trying to burn the entire country to the ground. So the, the Western media doesn't want to talk about this. And while they're not talking about it, the US has been quietly pushing this in the UN to try to recognize this fake national unity government that no one even knows where where it's based right now they're going to try to recognize that as the official government of myanmar and they're going to try to push this towards a say like a libya or a syria style scenario where the the west backs this client regime that's that's in opposition to the ruling government and military and then they will start intervening step by step economically perhaps even militarily even if it's just supplying weapons and training to the opposition keep an eye on this uh if you thought this video was useful please like and share it think about subscribing it helps the channel grow and it's free to do i have a website newatlas.report it's uh, there's no ads. There's no paywall. You can find and follow all of my work there. I am temporarily on Twitter. I don't know for how long, but if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's Brian underscore Berletic. Uh, find and follow me on Twitter. In the video description below, I'm going to share all of the links to these stories that I just covered. Take a look at, at them yourself and keep in mind, this is the opposition media. This is not Myanmar's military saying these things. It's the opposition itself admitting to all of this. Uh, in the video description, there are also ways you can help support my work. To everyone who has been, whether it's through Patreon, month to month, or one-time donations, or even if you're just helping by sharing my work with others, I could not do this work without that support. Thank you so much. And as always, thank you for watching. <music>